Okay, friends and subscribers, uh, first of all, I'm going to say hi, how are you? I uh, know I haven't been on that much, as I said, I'm still crook, but I'm getting a little bit better. Um, they still don't know what's causing everything, more tests and more tests. But I was going through um, looking for my Hawaiian images and... Um, trying to see what was going on and um, trying to find out some stuff because there was some other stuff that I found when I was in Hawaii. Um, but the whole thing is um, what you're looking at on the screen. This is a TSA security guard, by the way. And um, sound asleep. Absolutely sound asleep at the Hawaiian app. This was, I took this on my phone. Um, I totally forgot it was on my phone. I was going to do a story on it um, way back when. And um, this was, I decided to take the photo after, oh God, it was nearly, nearly an hour that we were in there for. And she was sound asleep the whole time. Um, and I took this photo just prior to actually going up and I was about to go and um, call up, um, get someone to come over and check it out. But I'd say they couldn't contact her and they were already on their way in the door and I did mention that um, do all your security guards sleep on the job. Um, but... This is the extent of Hawaiian um, TSA security. It was an older female um, in the job. And, mate, all she did was sleep. She was, when we got in there, we saw her walk in. Um, she sat down and just went to sleep. Didn't care about people in there. Didn't care that we were watching her. Um and she just dozed straight off and I mean she dozed straight off and she was out like 40 and as I said like over an hour um, I think it was 40 minutes when we started getting worried thinking okay if this is the extent of our security um, what in the hell is going on but like they whinge and whinge and whinge and whinge and whinge and say, oh, they need to do this and they need to do that at the airports and everything like that. But when the security cards get a chance, all they do is they go to bloody sleep. And um, and this is the true extent of TSA. Um, it sort of, it was an absolute joke. I know, I tend to watch she would have got in trouble because, like, I don't know whether someone else reported her or whether they went looking for her. But, um, yeah, I thought I'd do a story on this. It looks like it happened in this version. And, um, yeah, and with all the stuff with what's been going on with the Mandela effect, I totally spaced on this one. Um, but I decided to do the video and when I found it. And yeah, I'm still crook, guys. I really am. I sort of... I can barely walk. Um, I've got no strength. And again, every time that it happens, like, I simply um, go to um, the... Vistar's monitoring website for CERN and every time I get really, really sick, it's operating. Um, I haven't even been able to go to college for, God, it'd be nearly six weeks now. And, um, like, I love me college because I'm learning animation and it just pisses you off when it happens to you. But this is what... I thought, well, I'm going to make this story while I still um, remember it, while I still had the photo. Um, and, oh, yeah, when I'm talking about my Hawaiian um, photos, they've all changed. And, I mean, they've changed. There's photos in there that I know I didn't take. 
and there's other photos that are just so different um, like that wall that break wall that was protecting all the people um, it's like there were it was just gone because I knew I had photos of it and then there's photos of them on those bloody paddle skis out in the water but when in my reality they weren't allowed to take those skis out there unless they they owned them themselves but um they were the hotel ones that we saw out there and um but the whole thing is it's sort of going back to this this was in the hawaiian um international airport um this was on the furthest gate from the um from the thing i think that's why she chose it um and mate this sheila just went down and just bang sleeping so if you really think that you're safe when you're at an airport mate just look for the tsa guards sleeping in the corner because you'll attend to one you'll most probably find one but anyhow i'm going back to bed i just thought i'd make this while i um could i've got a bit of a spurt of energy uh I had to get up because I've got to go to the doctors in about half an hour. So, but the whole point is, folks, you've got to turn around and you've got to ask yourselves: Is this really what we're paying for? And um, I'm I might not be an American, but I can tell you now: um, like I'm still paying for it because it comes out of my air ticket, and. Um, it's sort of if I'm travelling and they're saying we've got to put up with having our bloody belts and our shoes and everything ripped off our clothing um, when there's no... Like, America's the only airport I've ever had to rip me shoes off. Um, everywhere else just use drug dogs and things like that. But, um, yeah, it's just gotten beyond a fucking joke. But what they're doing to you now oh yeah and in, in australia how's this you go through an airport now and whether you like it or not they swab you they just swab you it's sort of and they'll sing you you out if you look rough and tough they'll move you aside and do a swab of your bag and they don't even ask you they just go swab um, yeah, so much for all the so-called um, illegal searches. It's an instant legal search now. They pretty much, um, and it's racial profiling is happening as well. It happens to a lot to Aboriginal people here in Australia. Um, if you're Aboriginal, you're guaranteed to be pulled across to the side. And I think that's why I was pulled across to the side. I may not be a full blood, but you can tell one part but yeah so airport security yeah great isn't it and yeah there's bluebeard out i'll catch us all later when i'm feeling better and i'll make another vid but um yeah catch us around guys